What is the uncanny valley? And with the advent of super AI, advanced artificial intelligence in the form of software, behind the scenes computer programs, and real life humanoids. Yes, walking, talking robots. Are we going to face this phenomenon in society where the uncanny valley stops adaption and even completely prevents humans from embracing this new age? Let's talk about what the uncanny valley is. What the heck does that mean? The different research that's been done on it, why it's a phenomenon that has caused major bombs in the box office and has created a whole new niche for game research and development. Welcome, I'm Julia McCoy. I used to be a writer. Once upon a time, I had a hundred writers in a writing agency, and now I work full-time in AI. I'm embracing artificial intelligence before it took me out because online content writing was one of the first industries to fall to the advent of GPT. As the LLMs, large language models got better and better, and tools like the one I work at, Content at Scale, were built, all my human processes were automated, and what took seven hours, even multiple days, could be done in five minutes. If you're here with me, welcome to the revolution. I spend my days exploring the rabbit hole of AI, and I take you with me on my YouTube channel, Far Down the AI Rabbit Hole. So today we're talking about the uncanny valley. This was a phrase coined back in 1970 by a professor at the Tokyo Institute of Technology, Masahiro Mori. He coined this term to identify a phenomenon. According to his observation, as robots become more human-like, they don't actually become more appealing to humans. In fact, they can scare humans off completely. Here's a chart depicting the actual phenomenon of when the uncanny valley happens. We've got the initial benchmark of human likeness, paired with that is the industrial robot. As innovation grows and these humanoids get better and better, the graph goes up. A humanoid robot could be compared to a stuffed animal, doesn't have to be compared to a human. But if it continues to be developed to look more and more like a human in the likeness of a human, it could appear too corpse-like. It could turn out to look like a zombie. This is a valley, a pit hole compared to what a healthy person looks like. And that is the uncanny valley. We know that mannequins in the store are creepy. If we see them undressed, it usually makes kids point and smirk or run away. But what is this? What's happening? In 2012, Dr. Angela Tinwell started dedicating her life to researching the uncanny valley and how it relates to human-like characters. She wrote a book on this, The Uncanny Valley in Games and Animation, which has been recognized around the world to identify what she was seeing. Our minds are trained innately to recognize psychopathic behavior, and this is what we're seeing in a lifelike robot that isn't actually full of human light. There might be a smile on the robot's face, but the eyes are not responding. That's actually a trait identified in research in a human psychopath. So it's no wonder we respond sometimes with horror when the uncanny valley occurs and a humanoid looks too much like a human, but not quite there. In film, movies, game, and animation, projects have bombed, lost money because animators, designers, and developers created something that landed straight in the uncanny valley. Polar Express is a movie that was categorized as a bomb even though it did fairly well over time in the box office because of this. I remember the first time I watched it and I couldn't shake this creepy feeling I had when I watched the characters. And now I know why their faces' movements landed right in the uncanny valley. This is a great clip from The Y Files explaining how Shrek actually had to be remade because when they launched the initial version in theaters, it made children cry. Listen to this. Learn from Polar Express, animation studios began test screening their films. When the final cut of Shrek was screened, the Princess Fiona character actually reduced children to tears. So to fix the Princess Fiona problem, the studio actually went back and made Shrek feel less lifelike in order to avoid traumatizing children. <laughs> Because of the Uncanny Valley, we're seeing more and more humanoids that don't actually look like a human. The all-new Atlas from Boston Dynamics does not have anything human-like in its face. In fact, the face reminds me a little bit of a dune sandworm, where there's a black gaping hole in the middle. Dune sandworm. But also pretty cool. Doesn't make us think that we're looking at the face of a psychopath. The Tesla bot does have a distinctly human shape, but it has no face. 
In fact, the face is just black fabric. There are robotics companies out there making humanoids that do look like a human. Like Hansen Robotics that created this humanoid they named Sophia, who was actually the first robot to be granted citizenship by Saudi Arabia. When you watch this robot's movements and interactions, they are a bit creepy. But there was a country that celebrated this humanoid and made them a citizen. PAL Robotics introduced the first fully autonomous humanoid robot in Europe. This thing looks like a toy for a child. It's got a cute little appearance with a white plastic face and two eyes. The Toyota robot and the figure robot are more examples of humanoids being developed that don't land in the uncanny valley. At the end of May 2024, NVIDIA announced the release of ACE generative AI microservices that are fueling super realistic but fully digital humans. Take a look at this footage. NVIDIA says its new AI tools make digital humans more lifelike than ever. The tech giant just announced the release of NVIDIA ACE generative AI microservices to create super realistic digital humans. Companies in customer service, gaming, and healthcare are among the early users of the tools. The suite includes tools for speech recognition, language understanding, and realistic facial animations. NVIDIA is expanding ACE to 100 million RTX AI PCs and laptops, unlocking accessibility for developers to use AI models on personal devices. When Jensen Huang released this announcement on stage at Computex in Taiwan, he shared how even the skin of these digital humans can respond to temperature environments very realistically. So it's pretty crazy how lifelike this is. Does it land in the uncanny valley? I'm not convinced it does. It almost looks like NVIDIA has had a breakthrough here, but I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Do these digital humans freak you out? Or are they pretty interesting to look at? I think that we're going to see AGI, autonomous AI that surpasses all human capabilities, bringing on the advent of dematerialization, where we don't actually need humans in places of grunt work any longer, freeing us to do more meaningful work. We're going to see humanoids that don't necessarily look like humans. And I think this is important to remember. So what we see in Skynet, all of the Hollywood movies out there is just that, it's fiction. A humanoid deployed to build a house House, for example, could look more like a giant four-legged spider. Will that be creepy? Well, does it get the job done? Does it save us hours of time and free us up to do more of what we should actually be doing, getting back to being human beings? We have to remember the goal. And as long as we avoid the real uncanny valley of accidentally creating a humanoid that mimics a psychopath, I think we're safe. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What are your thoughts on the uncanny valley and super AI as we build AI that replicates human reasoning, the brain, the mind, software, and human behavior, which is the physical side of all of this. Let me know in the comments. I read everyone. I enjoy hearing from so many of you smart people, critical thinkers just like me, and even the viewpoints that are completely different than me. It's awesome to be here with you celebrating this new age. We are truly living in unbelievable times. I feel like there's an AI breakthrough every day. I look forward to continuing to bringing you the best in the AI rabbit hole right here on my channel. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this, and I will see you down the next rabbit hole.